Hey guys, so it's Daniel from Laser Gaming. In this video, I have a pretty long video that's going over all the changes coming to the Battlefield 5 beta. And they basically really released just like 34 pages of patch notes. So yeah, we're just gonna be going over those. And um, if you guys are new here, don't forget to subscribe down below for much more content on everything in the Battlefield universe. But let's just get right into these patch notes. So we're going to be starting off on the first page and it's just sort of focused areas from the close to alpha um so some of the things that they're they really want to change is like the long-term player friction so just like um why players would want to stop playing the game and sort of just how to make the game as smooth as possible so soldier visibility um was one of the main things they complained about in the bit in the alpha or just like during the snow and stuff you wouldn't even be able to see players and stuff like that um, but they're going to try and uh, make that a lot easier to see. The only like extreme weather thing would be like fog would be really hard to see people. Um, but in general, it should be a lot easier to see. Uh, soldier team separation as well. So you can tell from a foe from a friendly in a natural reactionary manner. This is something that was actually pretty hard in the alpha as well. Um, and just stuff like um, laying out the map in a way where you can actually see people. So there aren't like super dark corners and stuff like that. Um, and yeah. So, an area supporting an impressive amount of new innovations, improvements, changes, um, stuff like that. They thought there would be these kind of um, issues, um, but they really um, are aiming to just improve those. And in addition to this, for example, the experience in spawning, dying, reviving, getting revived, and the transitions between them, they really want to improve how smooth those are. And just to, before I continue, this is going to be a very long video. Um, if you guys want to link to the full patch notes, they will be down below, but I'm going to be pretty much going over all of it. So just sit back, relax, boys, it's going to be a long one. Um, so then there's also the death experience quality. So it was kind of frustrating to die in this game, um, just like sort of the way that the uh, kill cams worked and stuff like that. It was pretty hard and just sort of frustrating, so they're trying to improve that as well. A like gunplay, time to kill, time to death. Um, they're try they basically went with the first time to kill, the faster one. Um, so the time to kill... Um, is definitely going to be a lot faster and um, they pretty much went back to the first alpha but they went completely over weapon changes in this section so we're going to talk about that in battlefield 5 we want the damage model to allow for more focus on headshots compared to battlefield 1 so again this is reverting back more towards battlefield 4 and hardline but headshots actually don't do as much damage as they did in those games they do roughly 1.8 times damage in this game Whereas in Battlefield 1, I think it was 1.5, and in uh, Battlefield 4 and Hardline, it was two times. Uh, so for most weapons, a player that takes the time to accurately aim for the head will be rewarded with much more damage than a player that tries to quickly aim for center mass or just hit fires. We've also worked to make ADS even more viable by removing things like aim, aim punch, which could previously kick your sight away from your target during your gunfight if you ever get hit, resulting in missed shots. So basically, they remove flinch, which I think is really good as well. Um, to give you a relatable comparison, we're getting a bit closer to Battlefield 3's gunplay, especially with the addition of assault rifles that weren't available in Battlefield 1. However, we don't necessarily have the equivalents for some of those weapons that kill really fast in Battlefield 3 uh, due to World War II weapons having slower rate of fire. So they went, they have a whole table here that I'm going to put up on screen. It's actually a very good table, and it sort of just goes over all the weapons and their different time to kills. Um, so they have the M16A3 and the AN94, and they have the close quarters time to kill. Um, and so pretty much if you go down the line you can see that the close quarters time to kill um, on average is either the same or faster in Battlefield 5 when compared to Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4. Um, so if you compare the assault rifles, the assault rifle um, in Battlefield 5, the STG-44, um, and then some other unannounced assault rifle, um, the STG-44 is pretty much on pace with the Ace-23. It doesn't have as fast time to kill when you hit headshots, um, but it is still pretty good. Uh, however, the uh, damage at long range of the STG is slower than the Ace-23, um, so you're going to ha definitely have um, slower time to kill longer ranges with the assault rifle, but it will be on par with Battlefield 4 um, up close. And then there's a FAMAS-like weapon that kills in 233 uh, milliseconds up close, which is going to be similar to the Battlefield 4 FAMAS, um, but again, nothing compared to the Battlefield 3 AN-94. So I'm not sure why they quite made the comparison to Battlefield 3, um, with this because it seems like the time to kill is a lot closer to Battlefield 4 for most of these guns. Um, and then obviously you can see at medium range you're a lot less likely to get these kills, especially with the SMGs. Um, so weapon recoil, the cha they change the way weapon recoil decreases on automatic and semi-automatic weapons. 
The initial recoil is much slower now. Previously, recoil decreased very quickly from the first frame, which made it possible to tap fire uh, close to the maximum fire rate with significantly reduced recoil. But you still have a bit less recoil now, the result is adequate for loss and rate of fire. Um, so yeah, they're basically just increasing the first shot recoil on a lot of these guns, so it's harder to tap fire, which I don't necessarily agree with, but you will be slightly rewarded uh, more with sustained fire. Um, so dispersion and spread completely change the way dispersion and spread works. For the players, the most obvious effect will be a different behavior of your crosshair when shooting and hip fire. Besides that, small details in weapon handling will become more graceful. For example, you will no longer be stuck at terrible dispersion if you fire before or while going to ABS. Your weapon can regain some accuracy if you stop moving while firing, and firing single shots too quickly can no longer build up unnecessarily large amounts of dispersion. Um, so I wasn't even aware this was in the game, but I'm glad that they're improving it, definitely. Um, so SMGs are now stronger at medium range. While still the worst weapon class at this range, we moved out of damage drop off to allow medics to be somewhat competitive at medium range. So I do like that, however I would like the medics to actually get the semi-automatic weapons and not the SMGs. Um, but hopefully that's just something they're experimenting with in the beta and it's still open to change. So now we get into weapon specific changes. So for the SCG-44, they increase the vertical recoil on the weapon to better balance its potential. Uh, damage is unchanged to make sure it does not get crushed between the SMGs, semi-autos, and SLRs. Um, but the increased vertical recoil is from 0 0.45 to 0.57, but the maximum vertical recoil is decreased down to 0 0.78 from 0 0.87. So like I said, they're trying to make it um, better for uh, more sustained fire rather than tap firing because it was really OP. The only issue I have with this is that uh, we didn't really get to test it out on console, so a lot of these recoil values that they're changing are pretty much PC specific because a lot of these weapons, like the STG, has a lot of recoil for console. Um, so I really hope that they are open to having different balances for PC and console. Black Ops 4 is doing it this year in Call of Duty, they're going to have different balance on PC and console. Uh, Battlefield Hardline did it and they were one of the first games to do it. Um, and so I really hope that DICE is open to this um, in Battlefield 5. And then the Gewehr got increased recoil for its adequate power. And the Gewehr got moved to the Assault class also, which I think makes the Assault class have the two best weapons in the game. Um, but yeah, and they pretty much just increase the recoil and decrease the minimum damage. But again, it's still a three-shot kill at all ranges, unless you hit in the legs, I believe. Um, besides damage, changes are minor to the EMP. Um, yeah, they pretty much e increase the six-hit kill range from 35 to 50 meters and the seven-hit range from 50 to 70 meters. So it got a pretty significant increase to its damage at long range, even though it was pretty trash at long range. And again, the MP40 had similar changes done to it as well. Um, yeah, they increased the sprint out time for the uh, Bren, or decreased it, and so instead of taking 400 milliseconds, um, this is pretty much the time from, if you're sprinting and then you pull the trigger, it's the time it takes for the first bullet to fire, because there's a delay in pretty much all shooters, and it used to be 400 milliseconds, which is extremely long, but it is an LMG, and now it's 300 milliseconds for the Bren. Um, the car got its maximum damage reduced from 80 to 75, and they reduced the damage drop-off end from 80 to 60 meters. So the car got nerfed again, which kind of sucks. Um, I definitely hope that they're um, they're going to have a weapon that does one-shot kill up close, but I really don't think they're going to. Um, it's kind of sad because I think those are the best sniper days back in Battlefield 4, um, but you know, I, for some reason DICE is reluctant to change snipers back to that. And then there's, they go down the list of all the new weapons coming to the beta. Um, I've already done videos on those, so that's not too big of a deal. Um, but yeah, there's just quite new weapons coming. And then they have a whole, thing, a whole section on time to death. Um, but I don't really, it's basically the exact same as time to kill, but they just explain that it feels fast to die in this game, which is like, I, I obviously get that, makes sense. Um, next is the player health system. So similar to the attrition system, we want to add a deeper degree of strategy and teamwork when it comes to replenishing health. As such, we've removed the auto health regen system and replaced it with the partial health regen system. Really don't like that. Uh, meaning the player will only regen a little amount of health. Additionally, we have added one health pouch per life for all soldier types, which can revive you back to full health. These are meant to be used as a final resort if no medics or health crates are nearby. Just like our ammo attrition, the user can resupply this health health pouch. This can be done with received health pouches from medics, medical crates, and medical resupply stations. So I really do like that they're adding the ability for you to carry an extra like set of bandages to heal up, and I think that'll definitely be implemented in the Battle Royale as well, um, but I really don't like how the health regen is only partial. 
player visibility, so being able to properly see enemies and friendlies in the wide variety of environments offered by our maps and weathers is critical to how uh, taking damage is experienced. So they pretty much want you to be able to just see the people when they're shooting you, and so they're definitely turning down the snowflake particles and the rain particles in this game so that they are easier to see. Um, camera shakes and damage communications. Um, change the behavior of camera shakes gener generated by bullet hits and explosions when aiming down sights. So it's still going to be just as high when you're not aiming down sights pretty much, but when you are aiming down sights, uh, they're going to make it a lot less so you can still aim well, which I think is a very good change. Whew, we are just powering through this. There's not, there's a lot left though. Holy crap. Okay. <laughs> so let's see. What are we looking at now? I think we're going next into this okay so they changed the ability to ab80 spam um and that's pretty much just strafing back and forth super fast it's mostly a pc thing um because you can spam the keys a and d a and d super fast to strafe uh something that's very frequently done on pc in pretty much all games and it makes it really annoying to hit people at a long ranges especially when they're just strafing like that so they basically made it so that like the more you do that the slower you move back and forth which i think is just a good change for that i'm reviving um, they reduced the syringe revive duration from 2.3 seconds to 2.1 seconds, not too big of a change, but um, they made the buddy revive from 6.18 seconds to 4.37 seconds, and the buddy revive now restores full health for the revived players. I don't necessarily agree with this, I would have liked it to maybe restore to like 60 health, because I think there should be more of an importance to medic. Um, but I don't know. I, I'm always I'm always for be, always being able to revive people, and the medic always has the syringe by default too. So it's not even something uh, they have to give up. Uh, the medic always has the, the syringe, and then they get to carry two extra um, they get to carry two extra gadgets. So I think that that is a good change as well. So then now we're talking about Tides of War. So. The open beta will be your very first look at how parts of Tides of War will work in Battlefield 5. You'll take part in the Shock Troops event, and by completing challenges during the beta, you earn the unique Tides of War beta dog tag. This is a small taste of Tides of War, but we want to hear your feedback on how the flow of playing these chain, the flow of playing these challenges feels like. And then in the open beta, you can also get access to your company and customization too. Um, you'll have access to the chapter of Tides of War, your career rank, and stuff like that. Um, talk about the classes, the weapons, the vehicles, stuff we already know. Um, but then here they have the armory. So some of the items you will earn will show up in your shipment section in the armory. Many items that you earn throughout Battlefield 5 will show up here, so make sure to take your take a look. Uh, we are still working on making it clear where some of these rewards come. Um, the armory is a place for you to browse weapons, vehicles, and visuals available in this game. You can access much of it context uh, contextually from your company as well. One of the features we want your feedback on from the beta is the ability to acquire duplicate weapons and vehicles from the armory. These can be used to set up different spe specializations if you feel like you want to master every aspect of a certain weapon or vehicle. Now here's a full change list of the vehicles and stuff like that. So they tried to change the vehicles a lot. Um, they I'm not entirely, they brought up this big graphic. If any of you guys can make sense out of this graphic, I'm gonna zoom out and take a screenshot of it. Tell me. Um, but I'm pretty sure they just buff vehicles across the board, which is uh, pretty good. But here's like some sort of like change list they put in. I get, I can't entirely make sense out of it. And I'm trying to get through this whole patch notes and <laughs> don't want to spend four minutes on this, but we're just gonna save it. And then within airplanes, machine guns and cannons for the airplanes have been significantly increased damage, so this should make airplanes more effective at strafing infantry, as well as make the dynamics of dogfighting more decisive. Airplane speeds have increased to increase their mobility. Map flight ceilings have been increased to offer more space for dogfights. Stuka B has gotten an engine torque increase, as well as, the, as, well as getting its drag coefficient lowered uh, to bring it closer to other planes in terms of gameplay balance. Um, so they basically buffed the planes as well, they buffed their damage significantly, because that was a big complaint in the alpha was that planes could not touch infantry, especially with how um, the visibility was, in, like how bad the visibility, visibility was in the uh, snow. Um, so they fixed, they had a bunch of um, fixes as well. Um, so on Narvik they changed some of the supply locations, they changed um, invisible collisions, they basically did a bunch of bug fixes. Um, and they did the same thing on Rotterdam. They just had some bug fi fixes as well. Um, let's see. The minimap they added, much requested compass has been added to the minimap. Added location names based upon the player's position on the map, which I think is really good. A height map has been added to the minimap, so we'll see how that works. 
Um, player directional icons have been added for squads and teammates, which I think is good as well. On um, the kill feed, they add an option to toggle weapon icons in the kill log. Always good to have as many options as you can. Um, they got rid of passive spawning because there, I guess, were some uh, elements of passive spawning that were happening. Um, and the squad mate HUD, so squad mate icons will now stick to the edge of the screens if they are outside of the player's view. Squad mate's names, icons, health bars is now always shown if they have lower than 100 health points. Last man standing notification has been removed to the area above the squad list to reduce UI elements in the middle of the screen. Because a massive last squad mate thing would appear right in the center of your screen and it was super annoying. Um, health bars have mounted to each squad member, they said. Um, you're low on ammo or health, the closest resupply station will always be marked on the map. Really good change. Um, squad leader mutiny. So like in previous titles, asking for an order without a reaction will take over ownership of the squad. It's also reflected in the announcement log. And then they fix some party issues as well. So then they... Okay, so you no longer um, heal all the way, but you do automatically regenerate 30 points of health as long as you are out of the combat zone. Um... You apply the store health pouch by holding 5 on PC or D-pad up on console. It's a different button than just normal healing. Um, or like square to pick up something. As a medic, you always have health pouches to distribute or use. So that's kind of OP. Um, and then for, but so then I can kind of see why they uh, took away the Gewehr from the medic. Because it was a very good weapon. And nutrition, um, they increase... Uh, they basically increased the amount of ammo you could hold, but it was the same as the second alpha, I think. So not too much to go over there. Um, so for the assault, they have the mobile one offensive. It carries the rifle grenade launcher. It has access to standoff anti-tank weapons and explosives. You ought to regenerate 40 points of health instead of 40 when critically wounded, accounting from zero. Um, so the assault has increased um, health regen as well. So the medic is lightly armed but with smoke grenade for cover, the ability to heal or revive any friendly on the field, new ability to distribute health patches, uh, can equip the deployable medical crate, and the combat role is the uh, syringe revive so everyone gets it. The support is armed with powerful machine guns or shotguns, so the support class is getting shotguns, um, has access to anti-tank mines, has the ability to distribute ammunition or deploy ammo crates that also resupply gadgets. Uh, its combat role is fortifications expert, so that's one of the combat roles. And by the way, for the assault, that battle hardened combat role is what allowed you to auto regen more. And it can build fortifications and also have heavy items like machine gun nests and tank traps, um, which I think is really cool that the support can build tank traps as like fortifications, because um, it really gives another class an element of sort of the anti tank fighting. Um, and then the recon is armed with a bolt action sniper rifle or light, faster self loading rifle. The only class with access to spotting, scope, and flare. The only item that can relay spotting information to the whole team, um, including aircraft that can see spots further away now. Access to spawn beacon as well, and this combat role is a tactical retreat. So we're getting the spawn beacon back as well, which I think is really good. Um, kind of sucks they're giving it to recon too, though, because <laughs> recons are going to be even less aggressive in this game than they were in Battlefield 4. So imagine just having like Battlefield 1 style recons. Um, but you know, spawn beacons. I, I really think they just need to give one-shot kills or recons up close. Um, they did um, try a fifth class in the game called Machine Gunner. It has now been removed and rolled into the support class, though. Uh, what made the Machine Gunner special was the primary weapon, the medium machine gun. This is an all-new weapon class for Battlefield. There's still light machine guns that work like previous games, but the, mach the machine gun is a different... Medium machine gun is a different base, and we'll see it in the full game. The medium machine gun gameplay is about positioning and anticipation. A defensive weapon, however, is very powerful, but with one great weakness. You cannot hit fire on the move, and it takes time to get into a stable firing position, but it will likely be very powerful if you get it set up. Um, they added supply canister Collins for 7,500 requisition points, so a lot cheaper than the V1 rocket of the, uh, the Tiger tank. And so they, they also still have the V1 rocket and the JV2. And so, destruction for Battlefield 5 contain a higher degree of destruction. Um, you have the weather, you have bullet penetration in this game as well. And um, so, I don't know, they're just, I think they're taking um, less fire damage overall from stuff, but like oil barrels leaking and stuff like that can be shot to be lit, lit on fire, and stuff like that. They implemented spectator mode too. I'm not going to go too in depth over that, um, because I'll probably do a full video on it in the beta. 
Um, but yeah, it actually looks really good, the spectator mode does. And then uh, onto the last page of patch notes, I think. No, okay, there's still a decent amount left, actually. Um, so actually, no, they're just... Yeah, no, that's, that actually is pretty much it, boys. They just went over um, the um, patch notes and stuff like that. Um, they went over the spectator mode pretty in depth, but I don't know. Most of you probably aren't interested in that. I don't want to waste another five minutes in this video going over that. I'm just going to quickly go over the key future changes that are coming. Um, so the console aim assist revamp, so remove snap to functionality completely, and they polish remaining aim assist systems and curves to quality. So there's less aim assist in this game. That's likely because of the higher time to kill. A limb penetration damage model. We are currently working on bringing a solution to the wall. will allow limb bullets to penetrate and will solve situations where a soldier's arm is in the trajectory of a bullet that was intended to hit the head. Uh, that kind of stuff is annoying. Um, so the body dragging too is going to be implemented, but um, it's not going to be in the open beta. Uh, they're also going to have airplane resupply stations where you can like resupply your uh, airplane from the sky, which I think will be really cool. And then they have the scoring events where reinforcements have been refined and extended in order to more fairly reward team play. And debris kill recognitions, killing enemies with falling debris will properly reward the kill, causing it. So boys, that is it for these super long patch notes. I'm going to see how long this video was. We are on 20 minutes. Oh my gosh. Well, yeah, boys, that's pretty much it. I don't know if any of you made it to the end of this video. If you did, comment hot potato down below. I just want to see if anyone made it to the end. Uh, but again, boys, don't forget to drop a like down below. Subscribe if you are new here. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.